In 1989, Greater Manchester Police became involved in air support with the purchase of a twin squirrel helicopter which over a period of nearly 12 years flew more than 10,000 hours and helped to capture more than 3,500 prisoners. However, times move on and in 2001 the force replaced this aging aircraft with a new MD-902 helicopter which we're going to introduce you to now. The MD-902 is a twin-engined helicopter capable of flying in almost all weather conditions although to carry out police work we need to stay clear of cloud to see the criminals in action. Two engines provide a safety margin as the helicopter can safely fly on one engine alone so for work over a large built up area such as Manchester we can carry out operations in a safe manner no matter what happens. Our operational area covers over 500 square miles of Manchester and the surrounding districts and at our cruising speed of 140 miles per hour we can get from our base at Barton to any point within the force in 10 minutes. Our fuel tank can carry a thousand pounds of aviation fuel allowing us to stay airborne for nearly two hours although our average flight time is just 20 minutes. We operate at heights between 500 and 1500 feet above ground level. During normal operations the aircraft has a crew of three people a pilot, a front observer and a rear observer. The observers are police officers with many years of experience who have been specially trained for this particular role and the pilots are all highly experienced individuals with many thousands of hours of flying experience. Although the helicopter normally only carries these three people it can be configured to carry up to eight people including the pilot. It can also be configured to carry a casualty and a paramedic. Let's have a closer look at the aircraft and point out some of its features. The two most dangerous parts of a helicopter are the main rotor on top and the tail rotor at the rear. The 902's main rotor is 12 feet above the ground providing a good safety margin for the crew when approaching the aircraft. The tail of the helicopter is without doubt the most dangerous area to operate near which is why you should never approach the tail area when the helicopter is operational. If we take a look at a conventional helicopter tail rotor we can see how lethal it is. Any contact at all with this rotor would result in a fatality. On the 902 the tail rotor is the safest one possible because it doesn't have one. Instead of a tail rotor the 902 uses a jet of air which is sucked in from underneath the main rotor, blasted down the hollow tail boom and forced out through baffles at the end of the tail boom. A cone controlled by pedals in the cockpit determines which way the air blows when it leaves the tail and it's this feature which gives the pilot directional control of the helicopter. Not only is it extremely safe but it's also much quieter than a conventional tail rotor which is nice for you if we happen to be hovering over your house at 2 in the morning. Another advanced feature of this helicopter is the extensive use of computers in the cockpit technology which is more usually found in big airliners. Previous generations of helicopters used conventional gauges and instruments to display information to the pilot. This system relied heavily on the pilot's ability to interpret that information correctly if anything went wrong. In the 902 computers continuously monitor all the systems on board and only when a problem occurs will the pilot see an indication on one of his screens. This significantly improves safety by reducing the pilot's workload in flight. This aircraft is also fitted with the latest instrument display technology using computers to generate flight information for the pilot. There is even a full autopilot which can completely control the aircraft. Routes can be programmed in which the autopilot will then fly without any input from the pilot at all. We do still need pilots though. Helicopters can't take off or land without them although they can pretty much do everything else. So what makes a police helicopter different from other helicopters flying in the UK? The most obvious difference is that we carry a camera on the front of the helicopter. This is our primary piece of police roll equipment. It contains two types of video camera a high resolution daylight digital system and a three lens infrared thermal system. 
This camera can be moved in all three axes. It can rotate round through 360 degrees, it tilts 10 degrees up and then all the way down past the vertical. It's gyro stabilised which means there's no camera shake on the video. Film from the camera is recorded on digital VCRs in the aircraft. This video is used in court as evidence to secure a conviction. It's the role of the front police observer to control the camera. He has a TV screen in front of him which shows the camera image. The camera is controlled by a lap unit which looks very similar to a large PlayStation controller. One of the joysticks controls the direction in which the camera is looking and the other controls which lens is being used. We have full zoom control and we can computer enhance the pictures to help us when searching for offenders. At night we switch from the daylight lens to the thermal lens. This picks up heat emitted from objects which is passed through some clever computer software and is finally displayed as a black and white picture on the screen. Just because it's dark doesn't mean you can hide from us. The rear police observer sits in the cabin behind a console containing several computers, a screen showing the camera images and a bank of police radios. His task is to make sure that good communications are maintained between the helicopter and the police officers on the ground. The helicopter is not just a camera platform. With the advantage of our view of the scene, we can guide officers to offenders who have hidden or we can direct police vehicles to a stolen vehicle. Good communications are vital to ensure quick arrests. The rear observer also carries out the navigation, although getting to the scene of the crime is very much a team affair between all three crew members. In fact, a team spirit is essential to the smooth operation of the helicopter. All three crew members, pilot, front observer and rear observer, must work closely together, communicating clearly with each other, with air traffic control and with officers on the ground. Our communication is aided by the use of a downlink aerial. In flight this rotates downwards and transmits an encoded real-time copy of whatever we can see on the camera. This proves very useful for providing officers on the ground a clear picture of what's going on at a particular incident. Another piece of equipment unique to a police helicopter is the night sun which is fitted to the end of the left skid. This is an extremely powerful searchlight which we don't actually use that often as it gives away our presence and our position to the offenders on the ground. The times when we will use it are when officers are crossing rough terrain in the dark or when a scene needs to be lit up or when we really have no other way of indicating the location of a suspect on the ground. It's extremely powerful, three million candle power. In fact it's so powerful that it can't be used below 50 feet in case it sets the grass on fire. With all this equipment, the police equipped MD-902 is well prepared to fulfil its role to assist in the detection and prevention of crime.